Okay, sorry about that. Well, uh, who does start introducing herself? This is uh, uh, the eighth course for uh, Advanced Art Book Club. Welcome, everyone. Uh, as this is an introductory session, so we are um, telling about the book and how do we run the book club. Uh, we are a new group here. Uh, we are the six of us today, so all women. So that's a good... <laughs> Um, good news, huh? Okay, something new. Uh, who uh, would like to introduce herself? Maybe Bessie said uh, just that before. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I'll start. So, hi everybody, I'm Betsy Rosalyn. Um, <clears throat> I just found out about this two hours ago, so I am gonna have to catch up for next week. I haven't really started the reading or any of that, but um, I'll do my best to get caught up. And um, I have been working with R for about um, four and a half years now. I work in CUNY's uh, central office, that's the City University of New York, um, doing data analysis in R, um, mostly uh, R and SQL are my main two tools. And um, so I'm just looking forward to kind of improving my skills. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca. I um, am a biostatistician by day, and um, I've been learning R for about the past four years um, as needed, really ramped up the last couple, and I've done one um, or I'm in the R Packages book club right now, and I've picked at our advanced R as needed once in a while, but I've never read it cover to cover. There are many sections I've just haven't touched or barely skimmed, so I'm really looking forward to this book club. Um, I'm Laura. Um, I um, work in a bioinformatics group. And I've been doing that for about 13 years. Um, so I have been using R for most of that time, but also have to use various other things as well. Um, <clears throat> so I did read a little bit of the book a few years ago, um, but didn't really uh, cover all of it. So it would be nice to actually um, go through it all and, and actually uh, read it all properly. Uh, I guess it's my turn. So I'm Silvana. Um, I work as a data scientist in tech and I have a background in econometrics and I've been using R for a few years now. Uh, but this is my first uh, book club. And yeah, I haven't been through the book. Uh, I mean, I read chapter one for today. That's it. Yeah. Great. Nice to have you here. Um, uh, I don't want to pronounce it wrongly, but die. Would you like to introduce yourself? Maybe, can you speak? Let me know. Okay, so a bit about me. Uh, my name is Federica Gazzelloni. I'm a statistician and actually by education, by training. Uh, I just jumped uh, into this community in 2020, and I was doing some mocks and things for, um, you know, learning a bit more, uh, stay updated. And then I found this community so fascinating. Uh, there's many book clubs, many books that are very interesting. And if you stick on it uh, and keep forward with, with the book, with the chapter, so we divide the chapter. 
uh, with each other. Uh, you might want to do your presentation, everything. You uh, manage to get through the book. And so learning together is a good chance. And, uh, and so I do this uh, uh, when I um, find a book that I'm interested in. Uh, in particular, Advanced Dara have already been a facilitator for this, uh, for this book. But, you know, it's a bit like difficult somehow if you are not uh, doing other things and then you want to advance a bit within the all uh, uh, code, uh, making a package, uh, and so understanding a bit more of this language. Um, I thought that was important to, to do it again. Okay, so um, what is your, uh, so this, this um, a book uh, requires a uh, um, certain level of knowledge of R because it goes inside uh, the, the, the the functions, the the objects, uh, and it tells you uh, all the parts that you might want to deal with when you build when you want to build your functions, your packages, and everything. So it provides you the tips for saving memory, saving time, using the right packages, and so so on. Okay, so how this book club work. So let's, uh, I'll share my screen. Thank you. Okay. So there's something in the chat. Hello. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. I've just seen it. Thanks for joining us. Okay. So as you can see, um, this is the this is the the book. Uh, I'm sure you have seen it. Okay, and this is uh, uh, the second uh, edition of the book. And so this is what we are going through uh, with this book club. And the um, our book clubs provide some um, sort of notes that you can find it in the Slack uh, and uh, you can find it here, for example. So this is uh, the Book Club Advanced R uh, channel. And here on, the, uh, on this bar, top bar, you find the book, the shared slide, um, and an Excel sheet where you can sign up for your chapter. So you decide which one of the chapters you like to uh, talk the other. And here is the GitHub repo. And so when you need something, you have this uh, links on top uh, here. So, and these are the notes. What's happened in the this book club? So these are, um, uh, uh, Sort of, uh, as I said, I've already introduced um, a chance for uh, sharing our understanding of a certain topic and be able to learn together uh, and meet through the book, so uh, chapter by chapter. Um, usually, uh, this depends by the type of the book. Uh, usually, we do one chapter a week. But we can do more if the chapter is short, if we are, um, you know, aware of the topic uh, and everything. Or we might take uh, two weeks for a chapter. This is something that can happen. Okay, we can do like a theoretical session first and a practical session later. So we can do uh, uh, as much as you like, as, as much as we like. Okay, so. Um, session is recorded, as you know, uh, and it will be posted on uh, um, our YouTube channel. Um, this is a safe environment for learning. So we have a, a code of conduct, so be nice to each other, um, 
and this is uh, are the the main most important thing. So we are we have already introduced ourselves, uh, and here is what uh, is everything uh, stored. So we have a Git and GitHub. We have a GitHub repository for each book club and even for this book club where you can find these notes, the codes, and everything. And so when you do your presentation, you can, might want to change a bit the notes that have already been made, attaching at the bottom, uh, mixing them up. You can do whatever you like that you think is, um, is worth do. Uh, and uh, mind that this will go to the following course so that we read your uh, your changes. Um, you have uh, uh, some resources here, uh, and if you if you like, you 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 might be able to find all the things that uh, you searching for. So, what is this uh, this book? I show you, uh, so this is a um, um, very nice book. Um, and uh, this is the second edition. Uh, here you can find the first edition. I can uh, highlight you because I found it interesting. Uh, what are uh, the main, the most important changes to the book? Um, but most importantly, uh, throughout the book, uh, we um, are, are going to improve our programming skills, learning a bit more about all the objects um, that I is composed of. And we will be developing um, a deeper understanding of the R language fundamentals. And so we can understand what a functional programming is and what it means for uh, when we uh, talk about object-oriented programming. And this is, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the main part of the book, okay? And also we understand about metaprogramming while developing in R. Obviously this first session is an introductory session, so we, Today, understand that what was in the book. Okay, this are this is the main. Here you have. Uh, um, I put the the link in the chat uh, for your reference. That would be um, so you, you can have it there. Uh, this is the the book. Even if you uh, you got in the, um, in the Slack channel, but just in case you want to have a look. At uh, and here at the bottom, you have uh, more other other resources. So what's new uh, with uh, within this this um, edition? Uh, as you can see, there are the the there have been uh, some changes, but most importantly, that the first edition used Bayesian mostly throughout the book. While here, uh, with the list version, um, hardly we can, which is the order, and uh, not um, he's not just an order of this book. He brought uh, the tidyverse meta package uh, and um, many other books, such as Alpha Z Shy, and, uh, and so. Um, we will have uh, a pleasure to talk to him, most probably, throughout uh, this book club. Um, and so um, here we use Arlang, um, which is not just, a, um, so we are not just working out of the library boxes, but instead we use some uh, uh, library packages uh, for uh, understanding a bit more about that. Um, okay, so the book is made of five main sections. So we have the foundation, 
the functional programming, the object-oriented programming, this uh, OOP, the metaprogramming, and then finally the techniques. Um, what this book is not, so it's not after the shire, it's not a package, so um, it's for, 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 for someone who is already uh, aware of the uh, language. And, and uh, we are not going to make a package, but we are going to understand how to make functions which are uh, very, uh, how can I, what, what's the, 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 the right word to say? They are fit for, for purpose, for fit, I mean, uh, they are fast, they are, uh, work well, uh, and my, then you might want to put it inside a page eventually. Okay, so um, these are the five sections. Uh, in the first section, the foundation, okay, this is, um, you can see, uh, this is the first section, okay, we have name values, vector, subsecting, um, and then control flow functions and environment and condition. So these are um, what we uh, are going to see in the first section. And uh, I'll uh, stop for, for a minute here, because I'd like to show you. Uh, if I go uh, in our uh, lead dis discussion, um, Excel uh, sheet, you can see um, a bit more, okay? I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. So your reference, let me just uh, have a look at it. So here are listed, um, it's our uh, uh, file where we put down our names. Uh, and are listed all the chapters. And even if when we skip a session that we cannot attend it, we cannot do it, et cetera, we um, write it down here. Uh, and then, uh, as you can see, uh, there is a, uh, this column notes. Um, the notes have already, um, they, they already been written, but we missed chapter two, chapter seven, uh, for example, just to, to mention a few. 17 and uh, uh, 20 and 21. Obviously, you are not free to do whatever you like. You have your presentation. Uh, you can do it in PowerPoint, in now, in Quarto, in. Um, uh, uh, um, you can do it uh, in the way that you feel more comfortable uh, doing. Uh, but you might want to use the notes. They are already there. You might want to change it there, them a bit uh, if you like. Uh, and so this is just a suggestion. Uh, and I wanted to show you uh, the thing. So you can choose your chapter um, and tell us about it. Okay. So going back to, uh, um, to the book. And here, um, as I said, this is the first uh, um, section. And if we uh, have a look at uh, how the, the book is done, so we can see that there is an introduction here, and then the section has this quantization. Um, each section has an introduction, uh, foundation has its, its introduction, functional programming, its introduction, object and the programming and so on. And so um, I meant to go a bit inside the names and function today, just to speed up a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you like uh, to do that. Uh, as you can see each, uh, for example, this is the, the first, the first chapter starts with some quizzes uh, to understand uh, your your level within the, within the R language, and then just to to make you understand a bit more what's happening within this book, 
is, for example, that we already in the in the first chapter we use the lobster package, which is a package for understanding about the R objects, the memory, uh, the the internals, and what what is uh, uh, how to identify an object with uh, its name within inside the machine. So uh, such as uh, uh, the object identifier, uh, and this is um, somehow um, how can I say uh, very uh, informative and useful for uh, mostly for for setting up a, a, your own function and understanding all the bits that you can uh, put inside and customize. Uh, okay, what uh, I like to to have a bit of your uh, your thoughts about this and what how do you think we we should uh, um, proceed uh, doing as in the Excel sheet one chapter a week, two chapters a week. I don't know. What do you think about is uh what do you think about? What what's the best way? Do you have any extra suggestion? We can make uh, some any changes. We um I like to have a bit of um uh, your uh thoughts about. Hi. So uh, um a chapter a week sounds good to me. Um because I'm just looking at the schedule and that brings it all the way to August, doing the schedule the way you have it in the in the Excel file. Um, and so I think if we do less than a chapter a week, it's just gonna drag on too long and I think we'll wind up losing people maybe. And, you know, I, so I, I'm, I like the schedule. Um, I had a little bit of a question though like about the presentations, um, are you like if you, when you choose a chapter to present on, are you expected to present for like the whole hour, or are you supposed to present for like the first half and then the second half we talk about it, or like what's the structure of a normal week? Um, <clears throat> there, there is a structure, but there is not at the same uh, at the same time. So you can uh, you are absolutely free um when you choose a chapter and that's your session that's your show you you tell us about and then you might uh as i said uh want to uh introduce the chapter for half an hour and then uh, um we can have a discussion about that um there is a um or each chapter has some exercises for example uh, they uh, they um, are very useful, so it would be interesting, as you said, doing half an hour and half an hour exercises, for example. And we are uh, we even have uh, um, a, a advanced solution uh, book. Uh, so we have the exercises, but at the same time we can. So if we got stuck or if we want to have a look at how how um, the solution are done so we can even use that that just to show to the other and do some practice so that that is very uh very neat uh the and so we can do both of them uh, step by step if we we don't need to do all the exercises for each chapter. We we can just select a couple of them and spend some time talking about them. Um, okay, sounds good. Um, so actually, one more question. You said we can use the existing notes. Is that the uh the notes that you were using? And so if we wanted to change them we would just like uh fork the repo and submit a pull request or how okay, would that I, I show you um so here is the if i go to the black 
uh, and then uh, on the bar here on top here, there is our um, the default. Open. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, They are all like this, as you can see, github.com, r4ds, and then the name of the book club. Uh, this is made uh, from, a, from the book, book club template, but what, what uh, you are going to do it's um, okay. I I always use the old um, way to do these things. So like forking the repo and then finding in my environment, uh, which is can be a studio, VS Code, or also any um, interface that you find comfortable with, and then may uh, create a new uh, branch with the name of the, the chapter, uh, add my information in the notes, uh, and then push, commit and push. Okay, i show you. Otherwise, you have some uh, explanation here. Um, use this, uh, it's a package which is uh, um, a life saver and uh, <laughs> save time. <laughs> At the same at the same time, so instead of doing manually clicking there, you can just use, use this create from GitHub, and it will do exactly the same. And then um, this is to initiate your branch because you need to create a new branch. Uh, um, I show you. Okay, this is my R. Uh, okay. Okay, so here uh, on top here you have project, new project. Uh, I was writing the notes for chapter two. Okay, so I already uh, have uh, done, as I said, this book club, okay? So I have here, let's imagine that uh, I've already forked the repo and found the repo here. So you what what you want to do is just open up one of the files, which they are still in our markdown, uh, but that's absolutely fine. And then you might want to make your changes. Uh, okay, before beforehand you need to create um, your new branch, and you can do it with use this, or uh, I am now not inside um, the project. So I need to go inside the project and then it git will appear uh, on top uh, of this file. It takes a bit of no, what, okay. Uh, and then you might want to create your new branch with the name of the chapter or using um, use this, okay. Um, okay, here I have my git to create a new branch. I click here, uh, assign like a name of a chapter uh, or do chapter two like this and create a branch. Uh, now already uh, it's creating a pull request but I make notes of it because I need to make push changes. So I'll do all in one uh, one time when I finish making all, all uh, the changes. But uh, if I go to uh, the GitHub, here I won't see anything. Instead, in my uh, version, Um, 
got van to die. Okay, uh, here I'll find the, um, the a, a green banner on top uh, that asks me to, to make a, a pull request. Okay, so this is about it. I'll see that uh, I didn't update it. So now if I, um, now that I have updated the branch, what's happened in my uh, version that I need to pull down the changes with this arrow. And so and this is something that um, it will happen to you as well, because once you have made your changes, I, I'm not sure if I'm uh, uh, telling you something that you already know, or something totally new no i'm 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 familiar with github um i just want i was trying to understand um like will if i make changes does that change the main branch that everybody is seeing or is it like i'm just doing my own branch that always is going to stay a separate branch or like what like you know and and i okay. just wanted to make sure that this the, the slides that you were showing Basically, that's the notes that you're talking about. That's what we would update, right? Yeah. Uh, Same. Okay. Yeah. You you have you have your branch, and then when you make changes to a chapter, um, okay, uh, you for example, hi, I've uh, added some uh, some things uh, in this uh, chapter uh, two. Uh, which we hadn't, for which we hadn't the notes. So now I'm happy with that. So I made some some changes, and what I'm going to do is to commit my changes. And um, what's going to happen is that then I need to push. First, I commit the changes, and then they will uh, start to be like in the limbo between my machine and the uh, GitHub repo, uh, then I push them to the, to, the, to the main repo, but they won't go there directly, okay? There is a first step, which is a double check, okay? So, for example, I commit um, because this is what happened when we are live. Okay, I commit these changes and I say chapter two. Uh, commit the changes, uh, file changes, and all done. Now, for for my personal um, so best practice is pull down first, okay? Because this is very important. Make sure that your brand, your repo, your port is updated, okay? And that means that you need to go here and synchronize your branch, your main branch. So this is your main branch, not the chapter two, okay? You make sure that you have your main branch updated. Then once uh, once it's updated and you have committed and pulled down, just a double check, then you push it. Okay. So now I push it the thing. Mind that if you add images or data and everything, there is a size limit, if you go over 100, uh, so one megabyte, uh, it will get stuck. Uh, and so it gets inside a loop. Uh, and so mind that you stay under the 100. 
uh, and then now that I've pushed, when I go back to my repo, as you can see, there's a banner, which is yellow with this green button here, that says um, that I did it recently, a push, compare and pull request. Now, if I, so you haven't affected the main repo in any manner this way, okay? And you have your things in your, this is, uh, okay, this is my fork, okay? If I uh, look at chapter two branch, I have the change there, okay? So my, as you can see, there are some changes. But if I go on the main branch of my GitHub repo, I have no any changes. And as well in the the main book club uh, repo, so there there are some the the changes will start going there when you compare uh, a pull request. If I click here, the changes go that goes um go to the um main repo, but they get stuck because they need to be double checked. So John will revisit the changes. Usually, if there is no errors, so you have added all, all the libraries, you stay under the, the limits uh, and everything, uh, all the checks pass, but John needs to do the final uh, approval, basically. And then you find everything in the notes. Uh, okay, I think that finally answered my question. So basically, we do put in a, a, a pull request to have the changes pulled into the main repo, but it just goes through an approval process. Yeah. But you do um, put in a, a pull request. Okay, got it. Um, so uh, do you have any um, questions about uh the structure of the book uh how we can find extra resources uh, uh what how do you feel comfortable uh doing your presentations uh, because it's not said that you need to modify and push and pull from GW. you might want to use just a, a powerpoint or uh, a simple uh, Quarter of iron armor down, and then you render it and, and show it to us. Um, so you are absolutely free. Uh, you might want, I've seen lots of book clubs, you might want to use the book and show us what's inside and tell us what, what it's about. So it's absolutely up to you. Um, I, any questions? What's your favorite part and uh, this quote? What, what, uh, what, what was the the main reason why you decided to join this book club? What is the part that you, what is your favorite and you would like to improve in your skills? Um, I quite like the fact that this 
that kind of <clears throat> goes into uh, the pr the programming side of it I feel like that's something that um I quite often feel I don't know very much about so I think it'll be quite useful to um understand a bit more about um how things get stored and uh just <laughs> how it all works kind of the basic stuff For example, here, uh, looking at this um, chapter two, um, I was I thought that it was nice to try these quizzes. There are three of them to see our uh, level understanding. If you like to, you know, uh, try one of them. There is something in the chat. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is a data frame, and the question is how do I create a new column uh, called three that contains the sum of one and two? Uh, and what are the difficulties in naming a column uh, three? Okay. So I'll do a data frame. Uh, this is a data frame, uh, and there is a um, couple of um, vectors inside uh, made with a random uniform, uh, which is a, sorry, just run this, uh, see that we, I, I requested three elements. Uh, these are three random numbers. And so I build this data frame, which is this. Uh, and as you can see, they are not uh, named columns. Uh, how do I create a new column called three? Okay, first I name the two. With the function name names, I use name bf, and now then I assign um, one and two to the names of the data frame, and so my uh, data frame is now uh, this way one and two. So how do I make a colon, a new colon called three. Okay, does anyone like to suggest um, how to do it? Okay, I can do, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, there's a pretty, I, I think this is basic R stuff though, right? Like if you just do DF dollar sign three, and then you put the arrow to a sign and uh, you can just do DF dollar sign one 
plus DF dollar sign too, right? I do DF uh, dollar three, as you said, you, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then? So DF dollar one and DF dollar plus DF dollar two, right? I don't know why I thought you I thought you couldn't name uh variables starting with a number though. So yeah. We have a we have a number. Yeah, because you can't use a number. Yeah, but you know what? If you include it, if you uh what do you call it? Um enclose it in backticks, I think then it works, right? Like yeah, like that, exactly. Okay. If I do DF dollar sign, I should have the two things. Yeah. So if I do one, this is one. Huh. So yeah. Why I, yeah, I need to back tick that. But let's run it. Does it work? No. No. I need to back tick. Mm. Does that work? Yeah. And this is the sum of two. Yeah. 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 But the only reason you need the back ticks is because you can't name a variable starting with a number, right? Right. That's the problem? But why... Variables have to start with alphabetic characters, not numeric characters, right? Right. Exactly. When when I put the back tick, they are sort of transformed into the characters. But yeah. Like, why if I do DF dollar and then tab I now have column three. Yeah. But I cannot have a look. So this is basically the challenge dealing with num uh, uh, vector named with a, a number. So I should still use the back tick to see what's going on. Okay, so that, that was the first. Now, um, how can I uh, find out about the memory of an object in R? For example, I have this um, um, X with, with, made with a random uniform. Um, here is, is not um, so. This is um, class six zeros. This is not scientific notation. So there is a way to to make it um, scientific notation. And this, this is um, and my y, which is made of three times x. Okay. So uh, um. I can do length, maybe. Oh no, I don't have this idea. <laughs> Always do this idea. I want to do this. So this is length of three. It's, it's, it's a list. But what is this, the size? So how much memory does occupy, occupy, occupy Y? So uh, does anyone like to tell us about? I can use this library logs. Huh? If I use this uh, 
library lobster, load the package, and then make it work. This is a quite useful package. So I have a look with the, if I do the double colon and then tab, I have a, the list of the objects inside the package. So function or data sets in this case are all functions. So that there, there is uh, this function object size. I can use object size and then y. And I can see that it's eight megabytes. Eight megabytes. That's a lot. Oh no. How much is eight gigabytes? Megabyte. If I push to be dub, I have hundred. Um, which is one megabyte is very too much. So this this book deals uh, with these things, uh, uh, and goes inside the object uh, and much more. So you are going to make functions and I think vector or subsetting things. Um, and this is um, let's say the, the first part of the book. Um, does anyone want to do the third one and then I think we uh, yeah at the top of the app. on which line does A uh, get copied, copied uh, in the following example I think I probably need to actually read the uh, chapter to um, actually remember how any of this actually works, because I think I've forgotten all of it. OK, so how, how do I copy an object? So I just assign to a name, to, a, to another object. How do I copy an object? This A is this vector, and then What's up in here? I assign A to B. I'm I'm not sure about the answer. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read. Sorry, and I was dropped. I dropped out for some connectivity problems, but I haven't read this chapter recently. But I don't think that anything um, happens until the third line because the 52 is still just like changing the pointer itself but not making a second copy of it is my guess. Yeah, that's what I um, seem to kind of remember. Okay, so this is uh, a uh, now, what I do here is just um, take a new object B, assign all the value of A to B. Is that right? Okay, so the, the, the correct way to say that. So B is now A. And then what I do with this uh, bracket, um, so I take the first element of B and I assign this value here to the first object of B. So this is B, one, which is one, but then I change this value into 10. If I run this bit now, the first element of B is 10. If I have a look at B, this is now 10. Okay, so there is something in the chat. 
Yeah, I just found the uh, yeah. uh, section in the chapter that deals with that question. <laughs> I mean, put the link there. <laughs> So we're doing we're doing this chapter next week though, right? Um, we're gonna yeah, I think um um I don't know yeah definitely we we don't have time to um uh, now to go through uh the chapter we just started with it right yeah we do the the chapter next week if you like. So that's why I, I, I showed you this because that I don't know if there's things that are easy and we can jump uh and go forward. But if you read the chapter you find maybe there are a few things that you don't know uh, and then my work is work about. Maybe work is to do some exercises. Um, like here, that exercise because this is the chapter. There are some exercises here, and then uh, start continuing with uh, how to die. Yeah, the other a bit tricky for uh, as a chapter. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions. Section. Okay. So th thank you for attending uh, uh, this discussion today. So I hope to see you next week. Um, and we can do some exercises together yeah. uh, and uh, see what you know what we would we like we, what we would like to talk about okay thank you thank you thank you bye bye, bye. 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 bye.